The 2025 USF Pro 2000 racing season has begun taking shape for Evagoras Papasavas. Hello everybody, I'm Chuck Gibson with another edition of Tracking Evagoras Papasavas Racing here on a sports special presentation of Loveland Beacon Talks. Following his move to the TJ Speed Motorsports team in early November, the talented young driver from Loveland got his first laps in the seat of the USF Pro 2000 car He'll be racing this year as he takes the next step on the path to the Indy Next Series. Evagoras joins me to share the story of those first laps in the USF Pro 2000 car during recent test sessions at Barber Motorsports in Alabama and Sebring International Raceway in Florida. Let's get right to Evagoras now. Well, welcome back once again, Evagoras Papasavas. I, I love this. USF Pro 2000 race driver, Evagoras Papasavas. It is good to have you with us as we head toward Christmas. But um, thanks for joining us here on another edition of Tracking Evagoras Papasavas Racing on uh, Loveland Beacon Talks Sports Special. How are you? Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm doing great, Chuck. How about you? Oh, I'm, I'm doing really well. Thank you so much. And trust me, it's my pleasure to have you join us. So, again, just thank you for being with us. And God, let's, let's get right to it. I, since the last time we talked, um, which, was, which was an awesome uh, opportunity to catch up on the great news of you uh, joining the new team um, and, and moving up into the USF Pro, 2000 race championship division for uh, you know heading to IndyCar ultimately, um, but since then you have been on the track testing. So tell us, tell us you know all about what happened. Uh, you know, for, I guess first and foremost out in Alabama with your first test session in a USF Pro car. Yeah, so, you know, our first test was, like you said, it was at a Barber Motorsports Park in Birmingham, Alabama. And, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that test was really, really good uh, those two days. It's, Barber is a great track to learn the pro car, um, especially coming from a car like U the USF 2000, where we rely more on mechanical grip from the tires versus, versus the aero downforce from the wings and the body of the car. Um, in the USF 2000, so going to Barber, which is a very high speed, long duration corners, very high speed corners, um, high G track, it's very good to learn the pro car because you learn to trust the downforce in the car um, a lot because, um, you know, it's, it's, it's how you drive that track. You need to trust the downforce. So I think that that test was really good those two days, kind of like – just like rebuilding my techniques and driving to yeah. do more of the pro car, more of the higher downforce versus the USF 2000. And honestly, I think going to Barber for the first time was really good because when we went to Sebring, you know, we were we were very good. Um, you know, we were at the top, top of the charts. So, so yeah, I mean, Bar Barber was really good. Um, we were able to learn a lot about the car as well. Um, and, you know, it being my first test with the team, also, like building a good connection with the with the team, with the mechanics, the engineers. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think overall, um, Barber was really good and a very good um, uh, fundamental step in uh, learning how to drive the pro car. Well, and just a quick just a quick reminder for for those listening in now, and that maybe they missed the last edition. Uh, of course, the big news in the off season was that Evagoras has signed with the. Um, TJ Speed Motorsports, and so that, and again, moving up to the USF Pro 2000, and as you just told us, first time in the USF Pro car, and it sounds like it was a really terrific session. You know, was it, um, you know, better than you expected, as good as you were hoping for? I mean, were there some surprises for you on that first test session at Barber in, in Alabama? How would you... I know you said it was good, obviously, for the learning aspects, but you know, did it kind of meet or exceed your expectations? What would you say? I mean, going into it, honestly, I didn't really have many expectations. I was just gonna, you know, do my best and see see what happens. Um, you know, because that was like really my first time 
kind of going into a new race car, like just in general, because kind of my entire like racing career, it's been in USF 2000. I came straight from go-karts to USF 2000 right. to racing USF 2000. So it was like the only thing that I knew. So going into the, the pro car, I didn't really have any expectations at all. Just wanted to, to go in, you know, do my best and see see what it's like and adapt to it. And that's exactly what happened. So, you know, I did, I did my best. Um... Uh, and adapted pretty quickly to to the new car, um, new track as well. I have never been to Barber, so it was a new track, new team, new car, new everything. So yeah, it was a lot a lot to learn, a lot to adapt to. But honestly, I think it went very very well. Um, so yeah, very good. You know, fundamental step, like I said, outstanding. In, uh, the rest of my career, outstanding. Well, you know, and uh, we could probably talk more about that, but obviously since then. Um, and, and as we speak right now in the evening on Wednesday, December 11th, um, you just returned home from two days testing at Sebring. So this was your, you know, and you alluded to it a couple of minutes ago, talking about what just happened and what you learned. You alluded to the fact that, you know, that transferred to having some really great results. Uh, at Sebring when you tested on Monday and Tuesday. So tell us a little bit about, you know, what was that like for you now that you had a few minutes in the in the USF Pro 2000 seat um, and some time on the track at Barber, and boom, now you're at Sebring, which I know you love Sebring, right? Yeah, so going into Sebring, like initially, I have a lot of experience, a lot of laps around Sebring. Uh, I've done many laps around that track in the USF 2000, um, in 2023 testing, 2022 testing, um, and, you know, 2024 testing. So I did a lot of laps around Sebring. Um, so, you know, going in, I was also, I was already very confident with the track. I knew what, what to expect with the track. So it made everything a little bit, um, a little bit easier. Um, and yeah, you know, driving the Pro 2000 kind of like, you know, driving on a track, uh, at Barber, or sorry, at Sebring, where it's a little bit less, it's less dependent on downforce, still very much dependent uh, with these cars for sure, but less for sure than Barber. Um, it was it was interesting to see, you know, what I remember from from driving the USF 2000 to driving uh, the Pro car at Sebring. It was a uh, better comparison uh, for myself. Um, and yeah, I mean, honestly, I think. In a way, the pro car is easier to drive than the USF 2000 um, because of the more grip and the more downforce that you have. Yeah. You can you can kind of just you know you can push harder, and the car will just stick. You'll take it, uh, and you know in that way it's 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 easier to drive than the USF 2000. The USF 2000 was very much on the limit all the time, um, and you know we're still very much on the limit in the pro cars just. It feels different, um, you know, with the downforce and the grip. Right. Um, so yeah, it was really interesting to to see that and feel that. Well, that that Evagoras, you know, when you talk about, I, I mean, that's really a, an interesting aspect and an observation from you as a driver, um, and, and kind of a you know to categorize that as it makes it a little bit easier. So obviously, that downforce and the grip, and as you said, you could push harder. And from your experience in the past at Sebring, so I'm guessing, um, you know, being able to push harder, knowing that the, you know, that you're going to have the grip, um, you're going to have the downforce to hold the track and to go through the turns. I mean, ultimately, this is what I can't, you know how I am about speed, Evagoras. I love to hear about the speed. <laughs> so, I mean, did that, did that in fact translate to you feeling, you know, more speed, um, you know, underneath you or what, how would you describe that? Um, I mean, so I haven't been to Sebring in a while since that test. So it was kind of, I didn't really get like any feeling where it's like, you know, wow, you know, this is a lot quicker than what I'm used to. It was kind of just like normal. Um, you know, so that, I mean, that, so that still translates. Yeah, I mean, the, so therefore, like the downforce and the grip translated to, you know, like feeling comfortable and, and normal, like, you know, the experience yeah, you've yeah. had in the past on Sebring. That's an interesting observation as well. What, yeah, uh, sure. 
Yeah. What surprised you? What, if anything surprised you, what surprised you? You know, in in overall, in both of these past two test sessions, what was most surprising to you? Probably just like the amount of trust that you can put in the car, mm. and and it will stick. Um, that was probably like the biggest thing uh, that I had to adapt to from the USF two thousand to the pro car. Um, you know, with the 2000, it's very much like on the edge. You're like, you're you're never really like, I don't know. I wouldn't say smooth, but you're never really like, just like you know, braking, turning, and then accelerating again. It's always it's always quite an event <laughs> driving the USF 2000. Um, and I mean, you know, going to the pro car, it's very lot, very much uh, like calmer, mm. um, and. You know, that, that was probably, like, the biggest thing, just, like, trusting the car and just rolling more speed through the corners, just getting off the brakes sooner, right? Uh, getting onto the throttle sooner, things like that, just trusting the car and trusting that it'll stick. Um, and, you know, that's a normal thing that you get from moving from um, a car with less downforce and less grip to a car with more. Sure. Um, it's just lear learning to trust the tires and trust the car in general. Sure. Well, how about, uh, you know, again, so this was really your first test session experiences with, you know, your new team, the TJ Speed Motorsports guys. How, you know, what was that like for you? How, you know, what kind of reaction uh, did they have to, to seeing you, you know, put down some laps on, on the tracks and, and get, you know, how, how you adjusted to the USF Pro car and, and what, you know, what kind of reaction do you feel like... Uh, you had and what and what was it like for you to reacting to you know some kind of some new faces and some new hands and maybe some new ideas? What was that like for you? Yeah, it was it was a it was a cool experience for sure. Um, you know to to you know see all these things how a different team operates and I think you know from both of our perspectives it was very well uh, from their perspective and and seeing me adapt to the car. Um, and change my driving to fit the car. And also, you know, for me, to see how they operate, they're a very determined and focused team, and they want to win. Um, and, you know, they're very serious about their operations, they're very detailed, um, and, like, very, very structural, very much in order, mm -hmm. very detailed, um, which I really like. Um, and at Sebring, I was the only USF Pro 2000 at the TJ tent, Ah. Under the the team, so all the focus was on me, which was good. And, um, <laughs> that that has to feel um, great, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, we made a lot of good progress on the car, trying a lot of different things uh, with, uh, with with the team. So yeah, I think both ways, both for the team and I, it was is very good. Um, our perspectives of how things are going. Very good, very good. Well, it it sounds like. Um, you know this this transition is off to a pretty smooth start for you. Um, hopefully, even a fast start. I, you know, just because again, I love the speed, so I got I got to throw that fast start into the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so you know, real quick, what's next? You know, before I mean, because the racing season is just around the corner. I mean, we're you know here we are already on December 11th. I mean, you just got to be chomping at the bit. Uh, practically drooling at the, uh, you know, eagerness to get back on the track and, and compete and race um, where it means something, not just, of course, testing means something, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm for sure excited to get racing, um, to, to race with this team, to race with this car, um, and to get going on a very exciting and big 2025 season. Um, but, I mean... Yeah, so what's next is really, honestly, it's a break. It's a big break that we have mm -hmm. um, over the holidays. The next time I get in the car won't be till February. Right. Um, and that will be at NOLA Motorsports Park in New Orleans. Um, and that'll be, so, for, that'll be for test session again, too, correct? Yes, that'll yes. be for testing as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I have a pretty long break over the, the holidays can relax a little bit and then you know january february comes around and we're back at it um again for 2025 so well there's a there's a couple of cool things that are going to happen 
uh, between now and then. And I know, as you said, you get a chance to relax a little bit and just, you know, do the do the normal preparation of, of your workouts and and you know. And I know you're doing the uh, simulator and things like that. So, but there's a couple of things. The next time you get in a USF Pro 2000 car on the track at NOLA, you're gonna be an old man, Evagoras. <laughs> And, and, you know, folks, for the, you listening, and I say two things that are going to happen, and they're going to, frankly, they're going to happen on the same day. So what I want to do, Evagoras, I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas to you and your mom, Sally, and your dad, Nectarios, and obviously your, your sister, uh, Celia. You guys, I hope you have a most wonderful Merry Christmas. But everybody, we also have to, I'm not going to sing. I won't ruin your day. But uh, <laughs> I'll let the family do that for you. But December 25th, Christmas Day, is also the day we wish you a very happy birthday as well, Evagoras. You will. And like I said, you're going to be an old man now. You're going to be 17 for crying out loud. <laughs> yeah, going to be 17 years old. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't tell my mom that. She's going to start freaking out. <laughs> for, I, I think she already did that at 16. But, uh, yeah. but we, she's, well, done that, like, she's done that like almost every year. <laughs> well, that's understandable. Well, no, all, all kidding aside, listen, a very Merry Christmas to you. Thank you so thank much you, for yeah, taking Merry Christmas to you, too. Well, uh, thank you, of course. I appreciate that. And, and of course, uh, wishing you a very happy 17th birthday. And um, we'll look forward to another episode, you know, of Tracking Evergore's Papasavas Racing coming up in 2025. Um, probably, you know, would love to catch up with you as you get ready to go to NOLA for that next, tech set, or, uh, that next test session. But for now, again, thank you so much for joining us on uh, yeah, Love and Beacon. Pleasure. Thank you. You bet. Eva Gorse, say hi to the rest of your family, and again, Merry Christmas to all, and happy birthday. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Yeah, thank you so much. You, Take, too. you bet. Take care. Bye-bye. Eva Gorse, thanks for joining us here for another edition of Tracking Eva Gorse Papasavas on this sports special Loveland Beacon Talks. We look forward to talking with you. As you continue your drive to the USF Pro 2025 championship racing season. For now, this is Chuck Gibson saying thanks for listening and wishing everyone a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from Loveland Beacon Talks and Evagoras Papasavas Racing. This Loveland Beacon Talks Sports Special is a presentation of Loveland Beacon Digital Media and Gibson Communications, LLC.